afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Patrick Church as we celebrate the third week of Advent. As of now, masks must be worn at all times while in the building, even while seated. Please refer to your worship aid for our gathering song, Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Morn. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin the third week of Advent, we pray. Help us, O Lord, to see that your spirit rests upon each one of us, and we are all called to testify to the power of the light of Jesus Christ. Help us to bring joy to all we meet. We ask this through Jesus, our Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemnity and glad rejoicing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. 
refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, Who are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you're not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Every Holy Saturday, as the new Easter candle is lit from the blessed fire, we proclaim, Christ our light. And we respond, thanks be to God. At every baptism, when the Godfather lights a candle from the Easter candle and holds it for their Godchild, we proclaim, Christ our light, thanks be to God. And at every Mass, we light candles around the altar and during this season on the Advent wreath, and we place 
lights on our Christmas trees, all to remind us, Christ our light, thanks be to God. The time of our baptism, when our Godfather, in my case, my father's brother Norman, held our candle for us, the priest or deacon says to the parents, this child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. They are to walk always as a child of the light. So through our baptism, we're children of the light. And so our next question of Advent be answered on the third Sunday on our journey to Bethlehem is, how are we to testify to the light, as did John the Baptist? Perhaps by now you know that I'm going to turn to our other readings in order to answer that question. But first, to testify means to give evidence as a witness. If one is to testify, one serves as evidence or proof of something's existence. So if we are to testify to the light of Christ by our words and actions, we are to give evidence or proof that we believe the light of Christ has come into the world and believe that Christ's light does make a difference and believe that no matter how dark things get around us in our world, the light of Christ will not be able to to be put out. So with that in mind, we turn to the prophet Isaiah. In a way, this Sunday's prophecy from Isaiah takes us back to St. Matthew's Gospel reading for the Feast of Christ the King. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And the king will say, whatever you did for one of these least brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. Isaiah says that because the Spirit of God is upon us, because the light of Christ is within us, we are sent to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim liberty to captives and release to the prisoners. We testify to the light of Christ, proclaim its power by taking care of the least of our brothers and sisters. And while we do take care of those less fortunate than we are, the Second Vatican Council's decree on the laity says we should keep these three things in mind. First, we are to pay attention to the image of God in the ones who are needy, preserving their freedom and dignity even as they are fed and clothed. Second, we are to maintain pure motives as helpers, to remember we are sent to serve, not to dominate. And third, the demands of justice are to be met first thus reducing the need for future charity 
by eliminating the root causes of poverty and pain. Christians have but one goal, this document tells us, and that is to spread the word about Christ so that all people might share in his redemption and be brought into relationship with God. And all of this is best done with a good dose of joy, as St. Paul reminds us in his second letter to the Thessalonians. Joy, prayer, and gratitude help us to not quench the spirit in ourselves or in others. When we give testimony to the light of Christ, saying that that light makes a difference in our lives and in the life of the world, then the God of peace will make us perfectly holy. And we will be preserved in spirit, soul, and body to be blameless for the coming of the Lord. God, who has called us, is faithful. And God will accomplish these good things within us. Because Christ our light, thanks be to God. We stand to profess our faith, responding with a hearty amen to the statements of this Advent Creed. If you believe in the Creator, the Father of all that is, the maker of the stars of heaven, and the bringer of light to the earth, then say amen. amen. If you believe in the Son of God, the root of Jesse, who was born of Mary, then say amen. amen. If you believe that Jesus was crucified, rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is now seated at the right hand of God, then say amen. amen. If you believe in the Holy Spirit, the spring of joy and the key of knowledge, the giver of hope and comfort, then say amen. amen. If you believe that Christ Jesus will come again and that your journey of faith is led by God's plans for you, then say amen. If you believe in the strength and community of the church, if you believe that our mission is to serve one another in love, then say amen. amen. If you believe in the promises of God and that we are called to live in peace with one another, and if you believe in the life of the world to come, then say amen. amen. Knowing that we testify to the light of Christ through our faith, we turn to our loving God with our needs and concerns. For a joyful spirit, that as we recognize the many blessings that God has given us, our hearts may be grateful and our spirits filled with joy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who cannot find God, that the lights, hymns, and warm greetings of this season may be a doorway to find God in all things, and recognizing that God is with us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewal of prayer, 
that we may recognize how God is communicating with us in every moment and allow our words and deeds to be a response to the love that God has shown us. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our religious, that we may support them in their retirement as fully as they have served our parishes and our world. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our mission in El Salvador, that we may aid in the battle against poverty and suffering by providing education, mutual prayer, and other means of support, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they will enjoy the joy and peace of God's presence forever, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers, most especially that as we become the light of Christ for others, we may disperse the gloomy clouds of doubt and fear and make the world a more joyful place. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Stand and pray, sisters and brothers, and my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our goodness and all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Almighty God, through Christ our Lord. We believe the light of Christ has come into the world and are called to testify to that light by our words and actions, showing to others that Christ's light does make a difference, and that no matter how dark things get around us in our world, the light of Christ will shine forth. And so we remain watchful and alert until Christ comes again in glory. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Oh, uh -huh. 
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when it's once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, God, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, God most holy, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior whom he led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty God, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all other bishops and priests and deacons and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, your spirit. and with a bow or a wave, let us offer each other a sign of Christ peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, the Lord who calls us to testify to the light. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Here's a little trivia for you today is known as Bambinelli Sunday. Bambinelli being Italian for figurine, a tradition started by Paul VI in 1969. Since then, the blessing has been given by the Pope during the Angelus in St. Peter's Square on the third Sunday of Advent. So we want to bless the Christ figures you brought today that will be taken home and placed in your mangers. And so we extend our hand in blessing and pray. Loving God, as we, your faithful, take these statues of the infant Jesus home and place them in our mangers with faith, may we also create a space in our hearts and lives for your Son to come and abide. May the infant Jesus present in the mangers of our homes be the concrete sign of our sincere faith, which will enlighten, guide, and direct our lives and those we love. This we ask through Jesus, our Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. And let us stand and pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that our celebration of this Eucharist may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast of Christmas. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the good news of the gospel.